Hello and welcome to Baiju's IAS and welcome to the daily quiz. Let's look at the first question for today. Why are nuclear powered submarines preferred over conventional diesel electric submarines? They can operate for long periods underwater as they need not surface frequently. They are harder to detect. They do not contribute to emissions. They have higher chances of surviving a first nuclear strike. See, amongst the given statements, the third statement is incorrect, whereas all the other three statements are correct. So the right answer would be option D, 1, 2 and 4 only. This topic is in news because of the AUKUS initiative that we discussed yesterday in our CNA. AUKUS is a trilateral initiative that has been launched by Australia, United Kingdom and the United States. This initiative is aimed at forming a new security grouping in the Indo-Pacific region. Due to the significance of this development, it has been widely reported in newspapers and both the Indian Express and the Hindu carry detailed articles on this initiative. Under this initiative, the US and the United Kingdom are going to provide the technology related to nuclear powered submarines to Australia. See, nuclear powered submarines are seen as a strategic asset and very few countries have managed to develop them and operationalize them. Countries such as the United States, the United Kingdom, France, Russia, China and even India are the only few countries which have managed to develop nuclear powered submarines and deploy them into their services. These countries look at nuclear powered submarines as a strategic asset and they often prefer them over conventional diesel electric submarines due to a variety of reasons. See, nuclear powered submarines are essentially propelled by miniaturized nuclear reactors and this gives them significant advantages over conventional diesel electric submarines. The biggest disadvantage for a conventional diesel electric submarine is that they need to surface quite frequently in order to recharge their batteries and as well as to refuel. So this constraint limits the range of conventional diesel electric submarines and they often have to rise up to the surface thereby increasing their chances of detection by the enemy. Whereas nuclear powered submarines on the other hand can run for years together and the only constraint on them is the resupplies that are required for the crew. If they carry enough supplies for the crew then they can operate for very long periods underwater thus making them harder to detect. Then as compared to conventional diesel electric submarines, nuclear powered submarines travel at a much faster speed and due to their unlimited range, they can deploy into far away waters, thereby significantly enhancing the strike capabilities of a nuclear powered submarine. As a result, nuclear powered submarines have higher chances of surviving a first nuclear strike and when they are equipped with ballistic missiles that carry a nuclear warhead, it provides a country with the nuclear triad status. A country is said to have achieved the nuclear triad status if it is capable of delivering nuclear weapons through land, air and underwater. While nuclear energy is a clean form of fuel, they are not preferred over conventional diesel electric submarines just because they do not contribute to emissions. So this makes the third statement incorrect and hence option D is the right answer. India has developed its nuclear powered submarines under the Arihant class and it plans to build and deploy four nuclear powered submarines under this class. Under this category, India has already deployed INS Arihant into the Indian Navy and very soon INS Arigat is also likely to be commissioned. Now let's look at the second question. The RS virus primarily affects which function in humans? Reproduction, RNA synthesis, ribosomal activity, respiration. The correct answer is option D, respiration. See, the RS virus stands for respiratory syncytial virus. This virus is known to cause respiratory and throat infections. And even though these infections are quite common, they can be deadly to children especially to infants. As of now, there is no vaccine for this virus 
and even though most children get affected by it under the age of 2 years itself it can lead to death in a few cases especially when the children are vulnerable as a result of other comorbid conditions this article in the hindu reports the death of around 6 children in west bengal caused by influenza b and the rs virus now let's look at the third question what best describes the term bad bank seen recently in news a bank used by those involved in money laundering and fraudulent activities a bank which is unable to honor its depositors a bank that takes over and resolves non performing assets or npas in the banking system or a bank which deliberately violates the regulations of the central bank amongst the given options the correct answer is option c a bad bank is an institution that is set up to resolve npas in the banking sector this topic is in news because according to this article in the hindu the government has paved the way for the establishment of a bad bank which is a unofficial informal name for the national asset reconstruction company limited this institution will have the responsibility to take over non performing assets of banks that is essentially bad loans where the borrowers have failed to repay and such toxic non performing assets will be taken over by the bad bank or the narcl and it will try to restructure and resolve these non performing assets the union cabinet has decided to approve a 30000 crore program which will provide sufficient guarantees to the narcl to help clean up the npas in the banking system which threatens the stability of the banking system now let's look at the fourth question which of the following statements are correct the doing business report is brought out by the world economic forum its publication has been recently discontinued due to data irregularities and ethical concerns select the correct answer from the code given below so the doing business report or also popularly known as the ease of doing business is published by the world bank and not by the world economic forum so this makes the first statement incorrect however the second statement is correct because yesterday the world bank has decided to stop publishing the doing business report due to data irregularities and ethical concerns that have come up so the correct answer would be option b two only this important development has been reported in the hindu and according to it the world bank is going to discontinue the doing business rankings because several data irregularities and ethical concerns have come up with regard to its 2018 and 2020 reports and hence the world bank is looking to come up with a new approach to assess the investment climates in different countries see the doing business report or the ease of doing business index was a widely anticipated report which was published by the world bank it was essentially measuring how easy it is to conduct a business in a country depending on the investment climate it would look at several key parameters to estimate how easy and how quick it is to start a business to run a business and even to wind up a business this report was essentially capturing the performance of countries with regard to their regulations and as well as with regard to their licensing mechanisms this assessment was based on 10 parameters such as the procedures time and cost involved in starting a business dealing with construction permits getting electricity registering property getting credit protecting investors paying taxes trading across borders enforcing contracts and resolving insolvency if a country performed better on this index then it would indicate that the investment climate is investor friendly and thereby it was helping in attracting investments to that country now let's look at a practice question from the 2017 prelims paper due to some reasons if there is a huge fall in the population of species of butterflies what could be its likely consequence or consequences pollination of some plants could be adversely affected there could be a drastic increase in the fungal infections of some cultivated plants it could lead to a fall in the population of some species of wasps 
spiders and birds see butterflies definitely act as key agents in pollination hence a drastic reduction in their population would adversely affect pollination and this makes the first statement correct but the second statement would be incorrect as there is no direct link between the decrease of population amongst butterflies and a drastic increase in fungal infections however the third statement is correct because a decline in the population of butterflies will affect the food chain and predators such as wasps spiders and birds which feed on butterflies would also be affected so the correct answer would be option c 1 and 3 only now coming to the fact of the day let's look at a column in the hindu which refers to the e shram portal which has been recently launched by the government of india just a couple of weeks ago the ministry of labor and employment has launched the e shram portal which would be india's first national database of unorganized workers this portal launched by the labor ministry aims to register around 38 crore unorganized workers in the country it will cover construction workers migrant workers street vendors and gig and platform workers and as well as domestic workers a large percentage of the country's working population works in the unorganized sector where they do not receive any basic social security benefits so in order to bring them under the net of social security the ministry of labor has launched this initiative and the workers will be registered on the portal and they will be issued a e shram card which will contain a 12 digit unique number the portal will capture all basic details including their name address education qualification skills and as well as other relevant information which would then be linked with their aadhar cards this would enable the government to bring the unorganized workers under the net of social security and thereby provide them with accidental and disability insurance this portal has been launched by the labor ministry following directions from the supreme court which ordered the government to complete the registration process of unorganized workers as soon as possible so that they could enjoy the benefits of social security schemes the union labor ministry is going to coordinate with the state governments and the ut administrations along with the concerned trade unions in order to implement this initiative the state governments will have the primary role to register the unorganized workers and the union labor ministry will provide all the required support the government is also planning to conduct awareness campaigns around the country in order to make the unorganized workers aware of this initiative and to enable their widespread registration so with this we can conclude our discussion for today thanks for watching